Greetings and welcome to Jesse I Interviews. As always, I'm recording this on the lands of the Bunurong, Boon Warung and Wurundjeri Woi Warung people of the Kulin Nation, the original owners and custodians of these lands, and I want to recognise and acknowledge that sovereignty was never ceded. The interview I'm presenting today features Ken Booth, or said more accurately, Ken Boot. This is one of my favourites, not only because it's with a true legend of Jamaican music, but also because he was such a warm and inviting person. I visited Ken's house in Ligony, in Kingston, Jamaica, back in July 2012, together with my wife Mina and our Melbourne reggae producer Lucas, aka Temper. Ken invited us in and first gave us the grand tour of his own personal Jamaican music museum, his own collection of clippings, articles, posters and awards. He then spoke to us for over an hour and then excitedly played us all the music he'd been working on. This is a long one, so let's get straight into it. Jesse I interviews Ken Boot, July 2012. Colour is, is there, you know. Mm. The, the rainbow, one colour I know that that stands out though in the rainbow colour is the red, the gold, and the green. Mm-hmm. Mm. Very stand out. But if you look at it, you see purple. You know, you see white. You see all the colours of the world. Mm. You know, it's in the rainbow. So that's why we're talking about colour now. People shouldn't deal with colour. Mm. You know, because colour is not the answer. Because the rainbow proves that. That when you look at the rainbow, you see every single colors you can ever think of. Mm. You just have to look good. <laughs> mm. All right, Ken. So if you're ready, uh, we'll start the interview. Um, so the radio show is called Babylon Burning, uh, and I've been doing it for 15 years. Oh, yeah. And it's uh, mainly roots and culture reggae music. We play a little dancehall, but mainly mainly real real reggae music yes. and rock steady. So I'm just gonna intro it. Um, Okay, you ready? Okay. Oh, yeah. So right now I'm in Ligony in Kingston, Jamaica, at the house of one of the greatest legends in Jamaican reggae music from <laughs> the Rocksteady Scar early period <laughs> onwards to now, the great Ken Booth. Thank you for joining us here on Babylon Burning. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome to my home, yes. Um, I'd like to start at the very beginning, even before music, and if you can tell us where you were born and what life was like growing up. Well, I was born in Denham Town, you know, the first called it Simith, Simith Village. And um, my mother, my father, we're talking about the colonial days now, mm. because I was born in 1948, okay. the 25th of March. Um, I remember growing up in Denham Town as a child, that your parents, they bred you and fed you, but it weren't easy for them, you know? I remember that my daddy works hard, and my mommy at one time shop to work too. I remember that my mommy she used to work at a children's home. They call um the Maxfield Park mm-hmm. children's home. And um then my mother conceived seven of us. Mm. You know, um five girls and two boys. I'm the last. The last. Yeah. And you know, fortunately the first girl, she took up entertainment. But my mother is the one that actually inspired all of us, but she first, the okay. eldest child for my mother. Her name is Hyacinth Clover. She died at 75 years old. Mm. Um, she was the one that actually really and truly inspired me because when I was young, I used to watch her dressing up, getting ready for show business, and I wish that I could do what she's doing, you know? Mm. And as the last one, she realized that it wasn't me and I actually started out doing pantomime first, you know. Okay. Uh, yes, because she used to took me with her to rehearsal. Because she loves me very much, you know. Like she could see that me and her was like the, the compatible, musically speaking. You know. She used to took me there with her, and then whenever 
they have a kid's part to play in the pantomime. Mm-hmm. She would use me and all that. And then my youngest sister on the girl's side now, both of us used to dance. Because the, the show, it's my sister showing you know, her husband, right? He's a producer for the show. It's two of them, two comedians, Bim and Bam. And then Bim becomes my sister's husband. And so it, she becomes the host for the show, because it's her husband's show. She sings on the show. She's an actress. You know, she do all the business part of it. Mm-hmm. You know, so, you know, she was all around her. But my youngest sister now, both of us used to dance on the same show as Jack and Jill. Remember that story, Jack and Jill went up the hill to fetch a mm-hmm. pail of water. Jack fell down and broke his crown and Jill came tumbling after. Mm-hmm. Those are what? What do you call those stories? Nursery again? rhymes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and then now... But singing, you know, from I was, my mom used to tell me that when I was young, like four years old, and I and I, I vaguely remember this too. Um, now when I came home from private school, they called it private school in Jamaica. Mm-hmm. She said, because those days it's tenement yard, you know, yeah. we live in too. Right. Government house and then I'm yep. down there in trench town all over. It's still government houses it's today. It's still government houses today. And she told me that Whenever I came home in the evenings, I always get these can, these round milk cans, mm-hmm. and I would, I would get someone bores bore the holes for me if I can do it myself. I get a nail, mm-hmm. and I would tap it with a stone, and then put a piece of card in the two holes, because those days it's drum music we identify with mm-hmm. drum, yep. marching band music. So okay. every children love drum, so I used to come home in the evening, gather up all the children in the room make the cans, put them around the neck, you know, and I'll be marching them around the house, <laughs> and I'll be going on, balam, balam, baratatatatatam. And my mother, she said she could see that music in me, she called me Balam. That's the name she made for me, it's the first name mm. I got as a pet name, is Balam. Because mm-hmm. the way I do my mouth, my mouth with the, the jump sound. Yeah. And then now, um, I used to go to like YMCA for kids, Whenever they have concerts, you know, I would go there. And mm-hmm. sometimes I, s- I sing the songs and I don't even know the words of them. I just make up my own words when I was young, you know. I used to do that. Mm-hmm. My mother used to laugh. She used to laugh and say, Where get them words if I'm little boy? Because I just sing, you know? Yeah. And I remember because, you know, my mother, as I said before, we grew up in, in poor communities those mm-hmm. days. and. So we didn't have a car available or not even a bicycle. So my mommy, she had to walk with me mm. on North Street. Those days it would look a little distant, you know? Not like now, it looks so easy. But I remember she used to took me with her, walk with me, holding my hands, you know? And then now, while leaving private school, going to, a, a, for bigger kids now, I'm like 12 years old now, going to elementary school, Denham Town, in the same vicinity, yep. you know? Vicinity. And then you know, I find myself um, love singing, you know. Um, just before I I want to give you, because my mom is actually the one that we took it from, you know, my mother. Mm. Even my elder sister told me about Yep. We all took it from her. Because mm. she would be washing clothes and she would be singing like my Yellow Jackson. Mm-hmm. You heard about that gospel singer? Mm-hmm. She's just like her, you know, big right. voice. Home oh, singing home. Oh. When I come, you know, mm. those Negro spiritual. And at school now, I find myself, a lot of singers attend my school. Those days singing just start to ripe, you know, like a tree just start growing. And mm-hmm. So a lot of singers go to my school. For instance, the Lana Stewart, who turns out to be one of the members for the gay lads, for Sir Coxon, mm-hmm. he attended my school. And then you have some other like um, the Richard Brothers, and some more guys too that didn't pursue singing, but during the afternoon when recess, lunchtime, we would gather up, gang up at a corner somewhere, mm. singing and competing, you know? And yeah. <laughs> and then, um, yeah. And then, you know, um, whenever school gives holiday, right? Mm-hmm. Not, not holiday. Well, I, I have to tell you this one too. Whenever school going to give holidays, they always have a concert at, at, in a class in the school, mm-hmm. you know, to cheer up the children. 
So we had used to have a singing contest every year. Okay. In first class, because that one close up. Our class, low, the lower classes open up. The high ones, they close up, right? Okay. So I remember me and Winston, Delano Stewart, Richard Brothers, and some more guys that, as I said, in person, we used to compete. Like every year when they have that concert, it's either me or Winston who won that. It's either second or first, first, second, between the two of us every year. Sometime he won, sometime I, you know. But when school um, over in the evening, I used to end up at Boys Town, that's in Trench Town. Mm -hmm. um, for one reason why, because Boys Town is a, it's a boys institution for boys, mm -hmm. but they get grant from all over the world. You know, you have Boys Town everywhere. Those kind of um, institution for yep. boys, and so um, most children, even girls, used to end up there. Because the facilities that they have, they have a lot of, you know, ball to play with. They have ping pong, tennis, mm -hmm. and boxing. There's a piano in the dormitory. And I, I, I'm not a sport person, but I used to love to watch sports. So I'd end up there every evening. Um, the first time I'm going to play a touch a piano, it was in, at Boy Stones. Okay. Because I remember... As I said, we grew up in poor communities. We didn't have these things available to us. So I, music was in me so much that when I saw the piano, and, and I, I find myself banging the keys, you know? Mm. Like every evening I go there, that's where I would go first, you know? And mm. bang some, and sing something to a one note. You know, and on my way home now, in the evenings, um, this is what I'm going to get to, the Metro Stranger Call. Mm. Because I used to pass his house, Albert Street. Um, and then I would hear singing. And I would stop listening to these guys with strange. And they don't know that I'm there listening. And I, gradually I found myself in the midst of it. And I heard them singing and jatting at the clown, you know. Mm -hmm. And strange, look at me. That, and they said, well, you know, you can't sing. And I, I, I'm telling you this, from that day, from my mid stranger call that evening, I never stop going where he is. And he's the one that first schooled me when it comes to music. You know, shoot at me in every way. Because he was already a big star. You know, mm -hmm. he's, he's, he was singing with that Pat, Patsy. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then he was a solo singer also on his own. And he had a group, I forget the name of the group now. And then he met me. And we fell. We felt the spirit in e for each other, that spirit, you mm -hmm. know, mm -hmm. that communication, you know? Yeah. And so we started to write a lot of songs, we wrote songs about all different kind of subjects. And then Artibella came up. Mm. But first, before Artibella, Unados came up. And in our area now, there were a lot of Chinese, Chinese who would domineer the poor communities in those days. They have the bar, they have the, the grocery shops. You know, some young stranger, we decided to write a song about, about Chinese. We don't know the language, mm -hmm. but we wrote, I'm all saying you are, you know? Mm -hmm. I'm all saying you are. That's what she says to me. We don't know what more saying you means, but it had the little Chinese kind of song. Okay. You know? And then we make uno dos, counting from one to six in Spanish, mm -hmm. and he decided now that he's going to take me to Jukwit for an audition. Okay. That's why I'm going to get in the recording mm -hmm. business now. I went down there, Jukwit saw me, I was fat, little boy, mm -hmm. you know, because I was like, what, 15 or 14, you know? And when I sang Uno Dos, the thing about producers in those days is that when they hear a good sound, you don't have to sing the whole song. But I was lucky, you know, because Stranger was already a big star, so that the door was so easy for me okay. to, to go to go into. Yep. Right. So Drew Creed doesn't mean the same said his shooter was upstairs. He said, no, go upstairs with him. You know? Voice it right away? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because yeah, yeah, the session was going on. Okay. Anyhow, when I went upstairs you now, <coughs> my time called me and Stranger, mm -hmm. it was John Diego, 
was the main drummer those days. Mm -hmm. Then you have some other musician that didn't really end up with a big name, but they were named in those days. Then you have people like Brivet, mm -hmm. that just died the other mm -hmm. day. And you have Tamama Kukul and Alfonso and Hans and, you know, um, Baba Brooks. Mm -hmm. Baba Brooks was the, the leader for the Hans section those days. Okay. He works with Jew Creed. Yep. He's one of the resident musicians for Jew Creed. So he was the leader, not Tommy Makuko or Roland Alfonso. It was Baba Brooks. Whenever you blow for Jew Creed, yep. Baba Brooks would be the one who actually is the one who works there that you have to be in the on section. Mm -hmm. But Tom Makuk would be there. But it all depends, you know, because Tom Makuk probably is the one that wrote that on section. Okay. So, so Baba Brooks would have to read his line. Sure. So all of them were like that. And then, then when they you know the red light now, right? Not like these children know they have the red light. Mm -hmm. When red light, you know, it's time to record. Yeah. Because everybody is going on the same track. Those two tracks. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Everybody have to record one time. Mm. And this is my first time. I'm going to go on anything like tape. Yeah. So um, so when I saw the red light, I, I, I prayed, you know. I say, oh, Lord, God of Israel, I can't be true this. Because singing me want to do, you know, because I have no other way. Only that way I say, singing, you know. Mm -hmm. And then, um, bram, one cut. After the verse long the song, me and stranger, mm -hmm. when recording time, mm -hmm. one cut. One sing, and then everybody... What are you be a, because those days, you know, if you keep doing it over and over, the musician not making no money. Right. Because you go by how many songs, how many they, songs they, they, they do okay. for the day. Yep. So when I go through quick, you hear know, Brivet say, Yeah, man, that you be a, I know him, I do, you know. <laughs> yeah. So, Bram Bram now, Jew Creed. The first money I'm going to hold out of singing, it was 10 pounds. Right? Mm -hmm. But strangers were busy, so when I, I have to wait for my money mm -hmm. and my own at Jew Creed. Okay. And I'm kind of scared of him, slight. When I say not afraid of him, but because he has his guns yeah. and all those He's things, big, you know. Big presence. Yeah, right, you know. So I'd be there and peeping around, it, making sure that you know I'm there. Yeah. You know, so finally, sometime about 7 o'clock in the night, he called me and gave me the 10 pounds. Those days it was paper money in five shillings, mm -hmm. and I got a whole lot of five shillings. You know, but in paper money. Yep. And I remember I took it home to my mother, gave her most of it. I got to move here and, you know. Mm. And then, um... And how old were you at that time? About 15. Mm. Still you know? 15, right, yeah, right, right. 15 years old. Um, and then um, from there, you know, um, me and Stranger, we did some, some recordings for, like, some independent producers. Can you have a drink on here, Mr. Percy? Of a sound, sound system. Mm -hmm. We recorded for him. We have one named Sevens. We recorded for him. People that you never probably heard about. We didn't hear about those songs. Mm -hmm. You know? Mm. They were recorded for a Syrian guy. He used to have a big store in downtown. We recorded for quite a, f a couple of people. Um, but then now, uh, Sir Coxon, he were recording, he were like Motown. The kind of music that he were recording is what we grew up on, the blues. Because the first music that inspired us, you know, is American music. Because mm. we didn't have no change of those, it was sound system. Mm -hmm. And you have to go to America to get those dubs and those 45, what you call the big record, no 45, bigger. Mm. So that's what we used to first, the American music, you know? So um, I like what Sir Cox is doing, because it sounds... That's what I love, you know, my, my sister, when my sister sing, you know, she sang, sang like Sarah Vaughan. You know about Sarah Vaughan? Mm -mm. Well, these are the big singers of our times in America. Okay. In the 50s. You know, people like um, Ella Fitzgerald. Mm. You know mm -hmm. about that name? Yeah. yeah those yeah. the people, my sister, she sing ballad, you see? Okay. So I kind of used to that kind of sound. And then Stranger also... Sir Coxon was so established with, 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 with the music in, a, in that sense where he have all the great musicians playing for him, all the great solo singers singing for him. Mm -hmm. So it's like me and Stringer decided that we have to break that barrier. Right. So me and Stringer decided that we're going there mm. to do an audition. Mm -hmm. 
the door was also easy for me again because Shoe Circox, you know about Stranger and his big name. Yeah. He, it was nice for, for us to go there. So we wrote Art Bella and we wrote, we wrote World's Fair. Took my girl to the World's Fair and let her choose all she needs there. Now you choose. Brum, brum, dum, brum. Is we make that tree and all them on section the man string there now. Okay. Prom, prom, dam, we make that and then go to the studio and tell the musicians. You know, and then um we sang art better. World's Fair came out and was a big hit. For Sir Cox with both of us. Then you have some duo, duos like Blues Busters, Exam Wilson, you know. Mm-hmm. And people were come start to compete us with them because me and string so and so together, you know. Mm. But then I fell in love with Sir Coxon as an individual, right? And I find myself going up there, you know. Woke up in the morning. Sometimes I drink tea, I eat my breakfast and at the time. Most of the time I don't remember nothing like breakfast. Mm. Nothing to eat. All I want to do is to sing. Mm. You know? I want to be a part of and I keep going there and one day Sir Coxon called me in his office, you know? And he said to me, Ken, I think you should go solo, you know? So many great singers were there that I had a doubt, you know? Because mm. I kind of have a, a love for these singers. They say, Owen Gray, Jackie Whoopel, this, that, all these mm-hmm. big singers. You know? And some of them, you don't even know their name. That's El Perkins. And so when he told me that, he decided to record me, right? And he started me out doing soul music. Funny enough, that's what I started out doing, you know. Mm. Ooh, baby, I love you. That's the first song he gave me, an, an adopted song. Okay. He brought back from America. Right. You know, and then um, Rita, Molly, mm. she had a group named the Soulets, right? Mm-hmm. Our girl is Soulets, right? Yeah. They were the background vocal. When I sang, Ooh, baby, I love you, they go, Ooh, Ooh, that's what the do up days. Okay. You know, everybody's yep. like, and uh, now Jamaica was getting so, they started to identify their own musical culture. The ska. Yeah. The ska started coming on, people dancing, you know, and mm. the ska ripe. And so those two didn't, songs didn't do so good. And so Sir Cox now is like this. Whenever I, this tune is available to any one of us. We can just go inside. So I wrote, you're no good. Right. I wrote like, come running back. Now you come running back. Mm-hmm. You know? Mm-hmm. And, I, and I went inside. But I did a song before that. Before Sir Coxon, while I'm, I'm, I'm explaining these things, I'm, I'm remembering things that, before Sir Coxon, as, as a student, right? Mm-hmm. I've done a song for him when it was federal. For the Coories, mm-hmm. that tough, tough gang now. Ken Coory. you right. Yep. The shooter were down by the bottom noses. A little shooter like this. Mm. And I remember I do a song, long before I do any solo singing for him up there. It's called, um, To Prevent is Better Than Cure. And, but that didn't do well, mm-hmm. you know, in the sound system. That was another period before Sir Cox and his shooter. Right. Because this thing I remember. Um, but for, for me to break away, you know, it was that shooter one. You know? Yeah. So this is really the where my journey actually pick up. Okay. You know, yeah. Um, was it at Brentford Road back then? Yes, Brentford Road and And so I went back in the street, I did you're no good. And it's a sound system that actually serenaded your songs those days. And I'd go to the dance hall, standing up outside, mm-hmm. listening to hear my song. I don't hear it that night. I went back another night when they're playing somewhere else. I would hear it, you know. Mm-hmm. You know, at first, when you hear your song, it sounds strange without you. You know, like you're hearing your song, you know. Yeah. Sounds so strange to me, and I got used to it. Then I went back in again, and. Well, you know, but we guys, we lads, gay lads, Dara Wilson, Horace Sandy, Bob and the Master Griffiths, um, Lord Creator. Mm, Clarendonians, Clarendonians, you know, gay lads, etc., etc. Mm-hmm. So many of them. Um, 
we used to in, in inside um studio one and yet all of us writing songs and no one is disturbing the other, you know, and mm. we were friends and and because we were, we were under mother care and father care those days we would we'd be there and we are not we don't we probably didn't don't eat, we don't eat. Sometimes a friend would come and work somewhere else and mm. He loved the way we sing and have money and we'd say, um, you guys buy something to eat, uh, you know? I remember some of the songs that I've done. I actually done them on an empty belly, you know, because we, we have to go home in the evenings to eat and we are at Circox in the whole day. Right. Waiting for a break. Yeah. You know, so. And the next thing about it is that I can't forget Sir Coxon for his contribution that he had made for the development of this music. And I also, and I want people to understand that we also make our contribution to the development of the music. So, put all of this together, none of us must forget the other, each other. Mm. Because what Sir Cox did was to go to the farm work he put his money into music that he loves, and he know about talent. When you have a, when he hears good talent, mm -hmm. he sees good talent. He knows, and I must thank him for what he had done for my career. Mm -hmm. through, the, through the Almighty God who sent us here, mm -hmm. you know, I must give him thanks. But I also know that my friends and myself. We are also involved in that sacrifice, you know? Because mm. every time, um, Sir Coxon weren't making no fortune when I get to realize what is happening. It okay. was just love. Yep. Just like we weren't making no fortune, but the love for it. Mm. So, mostly when you recorded, you just got paid a one-time fee to sing the songs? Well, we, not with the Sir Coxon, he used to give us a weekly. Okay. But if no money is not making, we probably would get a little less. Mm. So to be frank with you, I have nothing bad to say about Studio One, and it's coming from my heart. Mm -hmm. Whatever difficulties we have along the way, with any producer, I would speak about the good first, because mm. that's what makes we what we are today. You know what I'm saying? True. Thank God for Sir Coxon, especially. Yeah. For Jew Creed. Because they're the one who inspire everybody else. Mm. The this, the that, you know? Yeah. And then people start producing me like Nine Observer. Mm -hmm. um, then it, it, it comes right down to Light Chalmers for Federal. Mm -hmm. That's where I'm going to get a big hit sound now, everything I own. No? Yeah. And that song no is a song that I cannot forget the time, that period. Because as I said I always try to speak about the good, but there was so much negativity along this journey, my journey. Mm -hmm. And I know all of us have a journey and there's ups and downs. If you notice in the song, Journey. Don't be afraid to walk that walk. Don't be afraid to talk that talk. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. This is how it goes. It's, it's, it's like that. It's, it's up, it's today you're up, tomorrow you can be down. But I never let it give me any feeling of, of, of not taking that journey that, that I was set out to, to do, you know? Mm. That journey, I, I always have that faith within me. No matter what faces me out there, anything negative, I try to go around it and be positive, you know? Mm. And so, because I have a journey and it, it's not finished. But this, this is the stage I, I am now. Mm. So I also even make a video. Because I'm doing new stuff. Because yeah. I'm alive, you know? Mm. 
and I, I just do a, a reggae album, and I'm getting ready now. I'm doing my own business, you know. Mm. My son he, he's, he's my business money part of it. He mm-hmm. does a bit. When I have um, a young DJ, G Mark, yep. he's also a businessman. They all of them assist me in my business. Right. And we, we just did a song together, me and G Mark. And then I have Philip, who is a business consultant, and also a management that he books me out to, you know? Mm-hmm. And um, I'm, I'm, I'm alive, and, you know, um, there's, there's another generation of people now who, who are dealing with the music, just as we did in the past. Mm. And um, some of it is, is negative, just as in the past also, but not as, like now. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm, I'm doing, I love the music that they are doing, but not all of the concept sure. of it. Yeah. So I'm, I'm doing this album where I involve in their part of it to show them that the music is good. Mm-hmm. Not to show them anything, but just to let them know that we're not, I'm not against it. Mm. But, yeah. I'm, but the standard, I'm not going to drop my standard, but so when they listen to these songs, they will know that we can do positive things. Mm with the music so that 20% because right now you have so many great singers and players of instruments young young people they are the one who plays my rhythm some of them like Carlington you know um, mm. then I have great musicians like Robbie Lynn um, I have I have Keith from Chalice who play bass I have Dwight Pitney I have Axman you know I own section I deal with Light Parks with mm-hmm. the people on uh, their own section. Uh, mm-hmm. I deal with Keith, another Keith again, who plays guitar. And there is some people who also involved. Uh, this guy from Colombia is a white guy, but he blows horn. Mm-hmm. And, this, and, and this white girl, she, she blows alto. You know, like whenever anybody come to visit me and they're a musician, mm-hmm. I have to grab something off them. Yeah. So that's yeah. how... Right, and <laughs> then this guy from California plays guitar, you know. Okay. He came here one night to, you know, to look for me, and I, and he had his guitar, and I told him to go for it. Mm. I'm like that, you know. Yeah. And so um, and then I do this R&B album, because these are things that I wish for. I wanted to do from, I've been in this business, and I'm 64 years old, and I'm I'm fit. You know, I'm, I'm a family man, you know, and because a man without a family is not a complete man. So I, and I leave the rest to the creator. Mm. I have so much things to tell you. Yeah. But, um, well, let me ask you about the creator because um, mm. you're a man that doesn't have locks, but obviously Rastafari is hugely important to your yeah, life. Yeah, of course, in my life. Um, his Imperial Majesty, Emperor Yeselasi, I love his teaching. And I try not to be at conflict with, with anyone about... I know in myself that he is the Godhead. You understand? He's, he's, the, he's the headmaster. If no one agrees with me, then that's your opinion. I'm only giving my opinion. Mm. I love his imperial majesty teaching because whenever he utters, right, he doesn't utter for no one side the thing. He, he utters for humanity. Um, as I was saying before, you know, that until the color of a man's skin, I always use this to show people that we all are one. Mm. Until the color of a man's skin is of no no significance, the color of his eyes. No leaders of this world has, has ever gave any speech to to show humanity that we don't need racism because we all are one. Mm. We all breathe the same day to day: the air, oxygen. You no, know, we all have two eyes. Mm-hmm. You know, we all out of the. Go ahead. We all bleed the same red blood. We, uh, no one have any green blood. Mm-hmm. I don't see nobody in the pink blood. 
Well, if they caught you or me, it's nothing but red. Mm. No, it's imperial majesty, right? When, you know, like for instance, like oh, in, in speak on education, which I, I'm not that well learned, but I know that education is the key to any nation's progress, mm. you know? Mm. And a nation without a vision will perish. You know, um, in, in religion, you know, his, his imperial majesty speak on religion. No one have to quarrel over religion because everybody has something to say. So if I say Rastafari is God and you say Buddha or Krishna or whoever, both of us or all of us can converse, you know, talk to each other and probably you can learn something out of what and I can learn something out of what you believe. Mm. So we don't need to quarrel. No, this is why I love his imperial majesty. Um, and if you notice that color is not the answer when it comes to his imperial majesty. Most, a lot of leaders in the world today they, they, they prove that they are, they are racist, a lot of them. You know, if you check out how they look at humanity, what they do for humanity, you know that they are, are one-sided. Mm -hmm. Now, the reason why I love people like you guys, you guys, the younger folks of today, whether you're black or you're Chinese or you're whatever, mm -hmm. they are thinking a different way. They're thinking about people, to communicate with people, to be, to be friendly with each other, no matter what color you are. Mm. You know, this, and, and that's a big change. You know, so I love his imperial majesty teaching. Guys teaches peace. Mm. Peace is what everybody, freedom will never, even my Peter Tash, um, there was a song about we never have peace and freedom until we have peace because we will never get freedom until we are peaceful with each other mm. then freedom you know but if we are not peaceful oh, we're going to be free we have to be at peace with each other you know so and whenever his imperial majesty utter the, he always tell you about humanity meaning one, not to separate, you know, segregate. Mm. You know? So I love Rastafari. All right. Not fighting no other relig religion or what. Because if a man say Christ, yes. You know, the Rasta man said that his majesty is Christ in, in his kingly character. Oh, I look at God, right? I look at God as the multiplier. He's the one who subtract himself, add, take away, and divide. You know, he's the first multiplier. He created him himself, and then he multiplies self through man and woman. You know? Mm -hmm. And see, we are, all of us. And when somebody says God doesn't have no color, I understand that. Because he's not a God of any color saying that, yeah, I'm black. Yes. In the sense that when they saw these people show creation, they are black skin. But out of that, there is colors. Mm. You understand? Mm -hmm. Just like when you see a white woman can have a, a black child. Mm -hmm. You know that, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Just like a black woman can have a white child. But you can see the difference between the two persons. But, but this is not nothing to if all of us. Are human beings. No, no one is better than the other. Mm. You know, so that's how I look at God. We, he multiply himself. And out of that multiplication, see we are? Oh, sorry, all of us. Mm -hmm. So it has no color. And another thing, there's a problem in the world today about people and um, who they are and what they're doing and this, that. That's not my business. You know, like, for instance, people talking about homosexual and all these things. And um, you know what I said to someone? If a homosexual like my album 
I'm going to buy it. I must tell him not to do that. Must I tell him not to buy it? No. <laughs> so, <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 that, that, what he's doing is not my business. Because I have my business also and, sure. and he's not bothering me. Mm -hmm. Why should I bother him? You know? So, things like this. Even his imperial majesty, right? There's people in high places that they are doing something else. And his managed to greet them. And with love. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, I'm not here to fight, but to uplift. Not to fight anyone and their feelings. You know? Mm. Uh, I try to, and I'm not saying this to get any, any special treatment. Because a lot of people, I'm an entertainer and I live through entertainment. And no one can tell me to fight anybody. Mm. You know? Mm. Because I have to entertain everybody. You understand? Yeah. The amount of people that like my song. I, how could I fight anybody that like my song? Mm. I, if they, they like my song, I don't have no right to fight them. Yeah. So, so if a man can't see that, it's for business. We must focus on what we come to do, to entertain people. And it doesn't matter who I entertain. And if they want to greet me, shit man, I'm willing to do so. You know, because we all are human beings, you know. So singing music is something that brings people together. That brings people together. Mm -hmm. You understand me? Yeah. So it brings all different races of people. It no matter what is your portfolio, the music brings us together, and that's what is nice. Mm. When I sing and look into an audience, I don't just see white folks alone or black folks. I see a lot of different colors. You know, I see people from India, I see people from all walks of life. Mm. And this is why I love music, because it brings people together. So I'm not here to fight anything. Yeah, love that. <laughs> I'm not here to destroy, but to uplift. Yeah. You know? Well, what about in the 70s when um, Rasta music became the mainstream in Jamaica. You, you had Rasta artists that were the popular artists of the time. Mm -hmm. um, you as an artist, um, even though you have your beliefs in Rastafari, you weren't um, overly Rastafarian in the music. Whereas some other artists maybe sung about Rasta even if they didn't truly feel it. I know right, that you Max know, Romeo, they talk about Rasta bandwagonists. I love you. The, they're bandwagonists. Mm. Because for instance, when Bob break out, because if Bob was here, you know, he would told you that uh, any one of us, because we are it makers, you know, we're not talking about foreign now, we're talking about Jamaica, where it all started. Mm. All of us are it makers. And when Bob break out as a Rasta man, because it was a, it's not a fake thing with Bob, you know, mm. he's Rasta. Because all of us grow together, you know, mm. and I deal with His Majesty, Rastafari. So when you break out now, a lot of people join the bandwagon. Mm. And if you ask him a word about his imperial majesty, they can tell you nothing. Yeah. But all right, let's say this is how Rasta get to, to be universal. You know? But me now, for me, Rastafari is not color, you know. You understand? Mm. You have white man where Rasta man. Mm. You have China man, we can tell you about his majesty. Mm -hmm. Kind all nations God rise up into. Mm. God rise up into no one nation. You, you understand me? Yeah. God is in every nation. Has so you go be. Australia against the Rasta man or white. True. And him tell you about his imperial majesty, a black man way. It's not no colour nothing, you know. Mm. God don't no colour nothing. It's knowledge, man, mind. And all of us have that. Mm. So where man don't tell me now, say, a, a Rasta man supposed to be a black man, and we're a black man. So, we, so, so God don't rise up everywhere then. God is in every man, and him rise up everywhere. Him rise up, if, 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 I'm, if it's a blue nation, what they say, him rise up there too. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You understand? Yeah. So no man never come tell me nothing. 
God, you have some Rasta man right now, right? Where's white skinned people? And him love his imperial majesty 100%. So you tell me something now. What you want to me say? Because you're a black man, you're higher than him. No man, that's so God work. Warm to the, the black man now, right? When him do have nothing to say, you know. So I'm to the Indian man who have something to say. Is he my guy listen to? I not going to his knowledge we share, you know. Mm. So if you're white or you're black or you're pink or you're blue, we all have knowledge can share. I must listen to each other. Mm. You know? Cause you have some people where when him are, you're a black man we're racist, you know. You might have talk about like white man doing something. Yeah. At a time. Mm. But it's a different generation of people now who, who go to school, white folks who go to school and know that this, some of these things were wrong and they are fighting against it mm. to make things better. True. Some of them follow no man. No man can't tell me about no color. Mm. Cause I have white friends, you know, right? Because I, I sing, I have friends from all different nations. All over the world. All over the world. And let me tell you this. I told my little friends them all the time that if my white friend came here to me and a black man mess with him unnecessarily, he would have to talk to me you now. And if a white man come into my home and mess with a black man unnecessarily, he would have to talk to me. Mm -hmm. And when I said talk to me, not making no barriers, you know. I don't make barriers. You understand? Mm -hmm. I have to make him know that, no, you're wrong. Just like the black man. Yeah. Just like the child, man, no matter to me. Yeah. Wrong is wrong. Wrong is wrong. You understand? So, you know, look at no color. Yeah, some people, that's so them stay in here at the door. They choose color. And call you black. Ooh. The black man, me a Latin, and I'm good at him, I'll kill you. You understand? Mm. I go to your, I go to the devil you let him, but him would look like you. Mm -hmm. You pick me up? Yeah. And God can't come to your white too. For test you and see if you are dealing with color. You listen? God can't come to you in a white farm because all colors belong to him. So you have, you have to watch what you're doing, you know. Because if God come to your gate as a black man or a Chinaman, you have to know what you're doing. Because you might run him away. You might shun him. Because mm -hmm. you're looking at color. But if you listen to the knowledge and the omnis that the man come with, then God said to him, say, Oh, so yeah, man, it's the right man. You can't not deal with color. God not deal with color. You understand? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. So singing, music, I think that music is the ultimate to bring people even in Jamaica, you know, in politics, mm -hmm. when there's a stage show in the audience, that's the only time that JLP and PMP hug each other. When they are sure, because everybody, that's how music stays, you know, music mm -hmm. bring people together. Mm -hmm. So you'll be looking in the audience, the thing is, I'm a PMP there, eh? the two of them there, eh? but that is how music stays, music is love. Mm -hmm. So this is what would I like to see, even after the music now, when you go outside there, you still show that, you know, yeah. that love with each other. Right. If the music started off, you can continue, you know, respect. Yeah. Music is love. And we love music. Love, 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 love is the ultimate. Love, 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 love it can recreate. Love, 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 love it can set us free from this world of pain and misery. Listen to this verse. People black, yellow and white, Jachuli made us to his delight, to blend together in harmony. And feel this love in you and me. You understand? Mm -hmm. I have sinus now sometimes. Nice. <coughs> Sound good still. Love is ultimate. So love now have no color. So 
Deep tongues of Jesse, all your name to you know. Mm-hmm. That's why I must talk to you so long. Because your name Jesse, you know. You see, Jesse, remember, you know, when a God named that, you know. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Jesse. You understand? Because God has many names. That's why I know the 72 nations of this world. Eh? God is with all of us. Is there, a, is there another another eye, two more eyes, anywhere else? If I see someone with four eyes, then I would say, are my superior? You never see that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Nothing but two eyes. Yeah. One mouth. <laughs> two nose hole. Uh, if I see a man with four, I would say, yes, this guy, I must worship him. <laughs> Never see that. You understand? We all are one. Yeah. Australia. We won't come in, man. But here, sir. Work on it. Yeah. <laughs> work we all work. We never stop working on it. One day we we'll <laughs> have to see it. Oh yes. And thanks your wife and um And Lucas. And Lucas, yeah, for travelling so far on the other side of the this world. You know, give thanks to you know, you know. Mm-hmm. You know, give say, you know, you know, you know what you mean, can you Yeah, we know, you, we know what you say. Yeah, give thanks for you guys. And, and give thanks for your time. It's been a pleasure to speak to mm-hmm. you here on Babylon Burning. Uh, really are one of the most important people in the history of the music. Just one more question before we let you go. When we came into your house, you showed us your museum, all yeah. of the photos and the yeah. history and awards. I mean, yeah. you have the Order of Distinction, is yeah. it, the OD? Yeah. I get a couple of awards. Um, I get awards all over the world, you know. People give me awards. Um, um, like the Order of Distinction, the Prime Minister Award, Caribbean Hall of Fame. I got an award from the Mayor um, of Mount Vernon Bronx. I got one from the, the Mayor in Washington. Hmm. Um, but I got many, many more. Um, you know what I'm glad for? That I'm only human. If you don't ask me, I don't tell you. Because some people, they don't realize that it's people that make them what they are when it comes to show business. Like you, what you're doing now, mm-hmm. there's so many people that listen to your program. Mm-hmm. I must thankful for what you're doing. You know, so, not no one man thing, you know? Yeah. Give praise unto the most, eh? You know? His Majesty. Give thanks. All right. Thank you very much. Ken Booth, thank you very much. You're welcome. <laughs> You're welcome. Wicked. Yes, Jesse. Give Great thanks. interview. Yeah, we yeah. appreciate that for real. You're welcome. You're welcome. Ken Booth speaking to me from his home in Ligony, Jamaica, back in 2012. Shout out to my Patreon patrons whose support helps me stay motivated to put out these podcasts. The Don Armageddon Time, The Real General Empress Irie, Me Idrin's John from Champion Sound, Tom Tanuki and Todd Solomon. If you appreciate what I'm doing with this podcast and you want to become a patron, you can do so at patreon.com forward slash jesse underscore i underscore interviews. Costs as little as three bucks a month. Thanks for listening. Eyes is every time. Of me.